Okay. So a brief uh, recap of last week's lecture. We studied three types of accounts. So before we can measure the impact of a transaction on the company's financial performance, it is utmost important that we should know that what kind of accounts are involved. We have three categories, the personal account, in accountancy, in accounting, in finance, we have two types of persons. The natural person, the living beings. And the second one are the artificial persons. The artificial persons are the body entities. They, are, they exist in the eyes of law. They are registered. They exist, but they don't breathe like us or they don't behave like us. Okay. They don't drink scotch. Uh, so the, 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 these artificial persons, they exist in the eye of law. So, but we consider them, we sue companies, we sue organizations, don't we? Irrespective, the, the CEO of the company can be your best friend, but you can still file a case against the company because you don't, you do distinguish between uh, the, the living being and the, uh, the registered being or the non-living being. In that way, we use this phrase, debit the receiver, credit the giver. Look, the word is person. So the person is active, giver or taker, yeah? Uh, the second uh, classification was real accounts. Uh, the real accounts are very simple to understand. Whatever business gets, comes in, is debit. And whatever leaves the business is credit. So there is a kind of borderline. There is a, uh, there is a, uh, how to say it? There is a uh, boundary. Uh, whatever comes after showing the passport in the country is debit. And whatever is going out is credit. Okay, so debit what comes in, uh, the credit what goes out. And then third one, which is occurring on everyday basis uh, are the nominal accounts. And here we use the uh, phrase debit all expenses and losses and credit all incomes and gains. So whatever your earnings, whatever your profits, whatever your gains are, they are credit. And whatever are the expenses or debits, they all are, well, they're debits. So all the expenses and the losses are debits by the way. So these three things, it's not a rocket science. It's very easy to understand. Uh, but if you understand this, then the way to understand the very complex and quite uh, challenging transaction is paved. It's very clear now. So after you understand this, things become far more systematic and easy to comprehend. Okay. Uh, I remember last week we had some examples, but then I want today to start with uh, Seher's job. Uh, she brought a file last week for you, but we didn't have a chance to discuss much, but I think we did, we did one actually. Yeah, we did first one. So let's do second together, all of us together. And I would be slow, easy, so that everybody, uh, we try to be at the same pace. Okay, and the best time, if you have a confusion about how to deal this transaction, and if you have a little bit of co uh, a complication or misunderstanding, uh, please let us know then and there. But you have to wear uh, There are three spectacles. The personal account, debit, receiver, credit, the giver. This is when the persons get involved in a transaction. The second is things come in the business, things go out. Debit what comes in, credit what goes out. And when it comes to specifically expenses and losses, debit all expenses and losses. And credit all 
incomes and gains. Rent paid is debit, but the interest you receive from the bank account is credit. You make sales, the things go out, credit, what goes out. You buy some raw material, debit what comes in. Okay, you, uh, you pay to your supplier, debit the receiver. You get money from the bank, bank the giver, credit the giver. So always three, uh, always see the, if you wear these three uh, lenses, uh, life would be very easy to understand. Okay, now we start with the first transaction. Uh, maybe, 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 Sahaja, you have this slide. Uh, you can, maybe you can go in that plank, and depending upon the discussion, if you can write down. Right? Uh, the first transaction is, uh, Mr. P, the owner, invested 57,500 cash and 32,500 pounds of photography equipment in the business. So the, 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 the owner, Mr. P, uh, brings cash and maybe he brings some paintings and the decoration stuff. Uh, is it what you mean? Yeah. yeah. So he brings two things to business. Yeah, this is photographic equipment. Okay, all right, good, 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 good. So, all right. So we can call it that Mr. P is a photographer. He started his studio. Yeah. Uh, of course, you need cash to start a business. Okay. He brings fifty-seven thousand five hundred pounds cash. But on top of that, he also brings some uh, uh, photography equipment. Yeah. Yeah. Or he hires a model like me. So. Who knows? Sorry, that was a bit exaggeration. <laughs> just, just raise hands. Just raise hands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? What do you think this small transaction, how, how it brings change in the company? Uh, remember I gave you a metaphor last time, the ripple effect. C could be big, the lake can be massive, and a small transaction is like a stone and you throw the stone, tick. It doesn't go straight in, it ripples. So a small transaction, even you pay a 20 euro coffee bill, from your business, even that changes your financial position. Okay, so the point is that how do you record it? And the mantra is very simple: keep three lenses: debit the receiver, credit the giver. Number two, debit what comes in, credit what goes out. All expenses, losses, debit. All incomes, gains, credit. All these six things will not be applicable in each transaction, but you have to recognize. Okay? You need to recognize which account is relevant here. Uh, yeah, and one, one disclaimer or one word of caution, company would never write its own name in the books. Okay? You can write the title, the financial statement of Mr. P company. But when you start recording it, uh, Mr. P would never show up. Any idea uh, who would be representing Mr. P? Mm -hmm. Capital, yeah? So capital, if Mr. P brings something, he brings capital, uh, if Mr. P takes out negative capital, yes, anybody in the back seats. 
Mr. P, the owner, invested fifty-seven thousand. So, cash. What is cash here? Cash comes in or cash goes out? In. Remember, we think from the point of view of the business, not the businessman. All right. So this is business. We distinguish between uh, business and the business person. So cash comes in. Yeah. How much cash comes in? Fifty-seven thousand. And cash is which account? Huh? Cash. Personal, real, or nominal? Say again. Cash in real account. Because look at the word. When I say, even though I don't, even though I don't bring the word real, I say cash comes in the business. So what comes in is debit. So cash, debit. Yeah. Uh, then the amount, whatever. And then he brings on top of cash. He also brings the equipment. Yeah. So he brings the photography equipment. Well, uh, there's no harm if we call, can call it equipment. Yeah. So equipment debit because that comes in. And um, and then you can add uh, these two figures. And if you add up fifty-seven thousand, these are two things he brings in, into the business. So when we add it up. Uh, it comes out to be um, 58, 60, 90. Is it 90? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what is this 90,000? Mm -hmm. What is this 90,000? I overheard somebody saying, you also said, uh, Bilal, capital. You, you said the same, yeah? Mm -hmm. This is capital. You cannot say uh, that cash account debit, equipment debit, and capital, uh, and Mr. P credit. No, 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 no. You can say, uh, Shah, P is a giver. No, P will never show up in these transactions now. P would be represented by the word capital. P would be represented by the word capital. I'll tell you what. Uh, if tomorrow he brings some chairs, and we still call them assets, uh, then third day he brings some other assets. So it's good that we have some second level classification of assets. You know, uh, 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 not last week, but the previous week, uh, I showed you the balance sheet, which shows the types of assets. So if we call everything as asset, then it's be difficult to see which asset, who's who. Yeah. So we can we can slightly classify. Uh, I will not even mind calling it photography equipment, but it's fine. You can call it equipment. Okay. So you can see uh, cash comes in. Yeah. So uh, cash comes in, damage. What comes in is debit. Is debit. Uh, equipment comes in, comes in when? Business is debit, and who is the giver? Mr. P. But Mr. P will not show up here. Instead, we use the proxy account, a representative account, which is capital. So capital underscores, capital underpins, capital underlines Mr. P. But we will not write Mr. P. Uh, as a title, we can give. Here on top as a heading, financial statement of Mr. P, the photographer, whatever, for the year 2019. Then it's fine. But when you start, when you start calculating things, then we never show uh, P, the owner of the company. Okay? Are you all okay or not? It's very important that you understand it. The reason we don't uh, add the name, uh, the reason you will not be, the financial statements definition is, we want to understand 
we want to estimate, we want to check the financial health of the company, not the company's owners. Now, this is a company where P is the only owner. Imagine there is a company like Nokia or Microsoft, where, which has thousands of owners. You get my point? There can be thousands of shareholders of Nokia. Doesn't mean that we have to write thousands of names. One word capital wraps up all the owners together. This is a small, this is a uh, kind of startup or a one man show, Mr. P, the photographer. Uh, if you have a public listed company or multinational companies, which can have thousands and tens of thousands of owners. Then what can we write? I mean, the owners can be many. For this company, but the, then we violate the rule that for a multinational, we are wrapping all the shareholders as capital, but not for the individual company. We have to be consistent. If you cannot write, if, the, if by logic or by the common sense, we cannot write all the owners' names of a multinational company, and by that argument, we should not write the name of the owner, even though he's the only owner. Like, I can't write here P account. All right? Because if I write it, then I have to write all the names of the owner of Nokia, Fenair, Kone, and what else, whatever is. So then we have to be consistent. So then we take a decision that we would never write the name of the owner per se. We would represent him or her or them and or them as a one blanket word called capital. All right? That's the argument. It's like something representing you. So capital, basically, uh, everybody knows that capital belongs to the owner. If you are the owner, the only thing is that we are trying to diplomat it here that instead of uh, writing your name, we use the word capital, but everybody knows capital is yours. But we rather treat you as a function, not as a person. Because remember one of the, uh, uh, what was that word? Conventions. We studied that business as a separate legal entity from the businessman. So therefore we use word capital belongs to business. Okay. That's, that's the idea. I hope, I hope it makes sense. Okay, good. The second transaction is uh, on August 4, I uh, paid 3,000 cash for an insurance policy um, covering the next 24 months. So you paid for the insurance. Yeah. Is it what you mean by the business insurance or the yeah, personal insurance? Yeah. The company insurance. Okay, all right. All right. So the uh, the owner, Mr. P, uh, has to insure his business. After all, there is photography equipment. It can burn out. Well, even by law, you must have uh, insurance of the building where you live in. Uh, he pays uh, 3,000 pounds cash for, let's be specific, uh, for the business insurance. See from your company's point of view. It's nominal, uh, Paulina. Why it's nominal? It's a very good. So it is an expense. It's a debit because it's expense, and it's a credit. What's credit? Cash. So here two accounts come in picture, debit, the insurance premium or expense. And this is a nominal account because all the expenses are debit, right? 
And then when you pay this expense, what do you do? You pay cash. Cash goes out. When you buy something, cash goes out. Cash goes out. Which, which account? Real account. Real account says debit comes in, credit goes out. So in this transaction, there are two accounts involved. The nominal account and the real account. And can I have a quick recap? Uh, which accounts are involved here? Cash account debit, equipment account debit, and capital account credit. Mm -hmm. So personal and capital is mm -hmm. capital is also personal because it's representing the capitalist. Well, capitalist as a community phrase, that capital is representing the owner. And owner is a person, yeah? But instead of writing the name of the owner, we are writing the name of the representing person. Make sense? So that's why it's very important that uh, you start also, when you record them, you, you should know, uh, have some idea that which category of accounts it represents and it's it's very easy three accounts person debit the giver uh no debit the giver debit the receiver oh debit the receiver the credit the giver sorry i was confused and then the second is the real account uh, debit what comes in and credit what goes out and then uh, debit all uh, expenses and losses and credit all incomes and gains. So it's quite self-explanatory. Uh, the third one, the, service, uh, the services are performed and clients are billed for 10,000 pounds. So now the business started. So Mr. Steve, where is your function? All right, he takes the photography, the video, and then he sent the invoice to the company. Hey, great, thanks for the business. Uh, would you like to pay my bill now? And the bill is uh, uh, ten thousand pounds. Yeah. Well, it depends on if you uh, if you say that. Um, I know what you mean. The prepaid, yeah? yeah. But the expenses are recorded for a period, so it, it doesn't say really that. Because normally we, we pay premium for a year, right? Uh, but actually, you're right. As a prepaid. Yeah. 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 Unless it says clearly. Yeah. Unless it's specified. Okay. Yeah. Because it depends upon the, the, the arrangement between you and the insurance company. Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe you pay, sometimes you pay lump sum payment and sometimes you pay in parts. Uh, all right. Uh, the services are performed. The first business is performed by Mr. P and the bill is invoiced to the client 10,000 pounds. Sorry? Yes. What comes in? But does the statement say that the cash is received? When you send the invoice, uh, you send the invoice, yeah? For example, I take some service from you. Uh, you send me the invoice. That's a transaction. Then I may take a few days or for a few weeks, depending upon our arrangement, maybe then and there, uh, then I pay you cash. The only time you pay cash then and there is when you take the service and you go to the tail point and you make a payment. But let's assume in this case that the service is performed, the function is over, Mr. P goes to his office, 
function is over then after maybe next day he sends the invoice that hey thanks for the business you gave me um here is the invoice attached for the service i gave you yesterday so it means that the cash has not come yet it's a credit business yeah mm -hmm. so what what is debit what is credit then mm -hmm. Uh, credit, credit. What is credit? But the money hasn't come yet. Money hasn't come yet. You see the invoice. The money has. It's like uh, uh, you know. Last week we had some discussion that if you sell something, if you sell something on credit, let's say you sell furniture, you make furniture. You sell 10,000 pounds furniture to a customer. The customer hasn't paid yet. How would you record it? The same thing happens like this. This is not a product sales, but a service sale, you know? So Mr. P is a service provider, photography. He give a service on credit about your client, the payment hasn't come yet because it's only invoice. Customer account. Uh huh. So debit, who's debit then? So, so because the client's name is not given, so can I call him or her or they uh, client account debit or client debit, right? Uh, because the client receive a service, uh, debit the receiver. The receiver in this case of the service, the service is photography, the core business of this company. So client debit and credit what? The services like sales. So you can say uh, client debit or and sales of services or services sales, whatever. Or even you can say sales because for this company, uh, the only sales would be the photography services. So here you can be a little bit flexible. So you can call it client debit. Client debit, the account's name would be personal because debit the receiver. All right. In this case, client, client is the receiver. Now imagine in this case, the transaction is uh, the services are provided by Mr. P uh, to XYZ company. So we know the name of the client. In that case, the name would be XYZ account because they are the receivers. Because the no name is given, the word is used clients. So let's call it client. Client debit. So debit the receiver. And what goes out? If you are a furniture maker, then the table chairs go out. Because this company is providing intangible services. So we can say the sale of services or service sales or services or sales. You know, we can be flexible. But the idea is still the same. And what goes out is the real account. Debit comes in, credit goes out. Make sense? Yeah. You have some. Uh, Uh, wait a sec. Uh, why can't I? Here. 
debit the receiver yeah uh, you make a sales to a client you make a sales to client who receives so it means that the client uh, gets some service all right uh, but in okay I'm, all right i i make a tweak uh, Mr. P gives the services of 10,000 pounds and cash is paid straight away. Okay, no, no credit transaction, no credit straight away. Uh, like a plain vanilla, you make a service, cash is paid straight away. What will happen then? No, no credit. Money comes in, so cash debit. Uh huh. sales credit so are you are you convinced that cash debit sales credit is fine see see that see see that look, look at look at the slide now what comes in is cash what goes out is the service you provide look we say we never say you are a service receiver you say you are a service provider you say you are a giver the company is a giver so what happens in this case, you get the cash, you give the service, simple. Both are real accounts, isn't it? Yeah, so cash comes in. But the problem here now is that uh, there's no cash. It's on credit. If it's on credit, then you can't call cash debit now. Mm-hmm. Look, you provide service, the company, the, the client pay you or don't pay you. You give service, so something goes out anyways. Yeah. Yeah, sales is credit because it, the sales things go out. Instead of cash, client is paid. Yeah. Then we have, because we haven't received cash, we have to debit somebody, something. Uh, debit is the receiver, the personal account. Mm -hmm. So debit, the receiver always have, whenever you do these kind of questions, you must have on a piece of paper or the slide open this one. So that you can quick, quickly see debit, the receiver. Receiver, there is somebody received service from you. Who received it? Client. Client the debit. All right. Okay, fine. Client debit, sales credit. Okay. Now, next day, what happens? The client pays you. What will happen then? If all is on cash base, 49 is a very important point you raised. I know this confusion is in, in many minds. Uh, if you make a service and the client pay you 10,000, yeah? It's very simple. Cash, debit, because money comes in and the sales service goes out. So let's call it sales. All right. Now what happened instead in this situation is that you have given the service, but cash hasn't come. It still goes out, sales credit, yes. So what comes instead of money then? The receiver. Who is the service? Who is the service? The client receives the service. So client the receiver. All right. Now imagine the next day a client pays you. He says, okay, fine, thanks. 
one day credit, I'm happy. Uh, now uh, I paid you 10,000. I should have paid yesterday, but I'm sorry. I was too drunk after the party. Uh, so there goes the cash. So what happens the next day? Cash comes in, all right. No, sales already credit. You have done credit yesterday. Remember, we can't do it two times. It's not two sales. It's not two functions. I wish I have many functions to more business. But you, you had the business yesterday. Yeah. Cash comes in. You will never write your own company's name in the books. Day one, when there is a business done and no cash is paid, all right, client, the receiver, sales, the credit, all right, next day, this company pays you cash for the service it received yesterday. So it's not a new service. So not sales, sales will not come again. Sales is done already. But the next day, you receive the cash. Money comes in, debit, or who's the giver? Can you see? Day one, client is debit. Day two, client is credit. Opposite. So basically, they cancel out each other, right? But if you see, what is the, what is the end effect? The end effect is cash, the debit, sales, the credit, which will be same as if this transaction was cash based, but by bringing this uh, receiver or giver thing, uh, because let's accept in reality, uh, not all the businesses are cash based. All right. So then we are able to facilitate a transaction uh, whose net effect is same. It's not different. Okay, uh, it's a little bit confusing to begin with, but believe me, it'll be fine once you start thinking more, yeah? Uh, you purchase the office equip office supplies for some amount and cash paid, cash paid 400, remaining is outstanding. Uh, first of all, please tell me what this transaction means. Now we are here, you purchase some office equipment or uh, not office equipment, supplies, supplies, um, and then you pay cash and then you say, we'll pay you later. So what, what it means basically, before you start thinking debit credits, what is the reality? What is, what is the situation? You owe, uh, you sell a So you buy something, uh, office supplies mean that uh, if you are a photography company, your supplies would be the films and all the basic consuming things, consumables, the, the stationery and all that stuff. Uh, you buy them, let's call them as a purchase because that's, that's like a raw material, yeah? Uh, but the problem is that your supplier supplies you, but you only pay him or her cash, 400. You have, you buy for 1,400, but you pay cash only 400. So what it means basically? You owe money. You owe money, very good. It means that you make an arrangement with the client that you know what, pay me, I'll pay you 400 now, rest some other time in the future. What is the transaction then? Uh, can we count as two transactions? Yeah, like, uh, yeah. Four hundred yeah. and that we receive for four hundred yeah. uh, supplies and pay four hundred. It will be real account, mm -hmm. and then for one thousand, it will be uh, like you wrote mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Or oh, you can you can combine it. You can combine it. Uh, see, when you buy some raw material, uh, it doesn't matter. You pay cash or not, cash or credit. Uh, something comes in, comes in. 
So what comes in? There are some office supplies comes in. Okay. So let's assume that it's a purchase because office supplies means. Uh, remember, I I think we discussed last week that we only use the word purchase or sales for those things which you deal in. what you deal in and here the word is office supplies means what you require for your running your office so it's a purchase let's assume it's a raw material okay huh you receive but if you are a receiver you will never write your own name remember receiver and giver you need to see from from the other company's point of view because you can't write you if you start thinking that are you the receiver or a giver then you will have a temptation to write your own name in the books which would be dangerous what supplier is a, a giver yeah uh-huh Mm -hmm. Well, two things. Two things. Yes, yes. Right. You're right. But what, uh, like, what would be the debit? What is debit? Purchase. Isn't you you purchase something? Something comes in. You see what? There's some boxes, some cartons comes in the office. So something comes in. Uh, the best way when you're confused is visualize, visualization, because you buy something, so there will be some cartons, bags coming in, right? So can we say, uh, in this case, uh, the purchase account debit, mm -hmm. purchase means the raw material comes in, uh, the full value is 1,400, is it? And what goes out? Well, the two things go out. Uh, one thing goes out and one thing doesn't go out. Uh, cash goes out, but, but cash is not covering the full payment. Remember, you're making part payment. So something goes out is credit. How much? 400, 400, yeah? Then the question is, you bought something for 1,400, you pay cash, 400. Where is the balance? You can't leave your transaction unbalanced. Recording has to be balanced. Sum of debits must equal sum of credits. If debit is 1,400, it can't be 400. Who is the gap filler? Who is the gap filler here? 1,000, OK. But 1,000 is what? 1,000 you owe, you owe to your supplier, so it's like a debt, and supply, and what is the thing, debit the receiver, credit the giver, you are the receiver, but never write your own name, then see the opposite, if you are the receiver, who is the giver, credit. supplier, credit the giver, Supplier is the credit. Like, like for example, uh, like for example, uh, in this transaction over there, uh, you you gave that service and the company didn't pay you, so you you use the word debit the receiver. In this case, supplier is the credit. Are you okay with this, gentlemen at the back? Uh, you buy something, you pay some cash, but not the full cash. What is, it, what is the implication? The implication is that I bought 1,400 worth something. Well, that comes in. So I write the full value coming in. Debit comes in. I pay cash. Cash goes out. But not the full value. The question is, rest is the credit. I owe somebody. I owe somebody means I received something. I received something means somebody is a giver to me. And who's the giver in this case? Supplier. Supplier. So when I write thousand, 
suppliers account thousand is ba it basically means that i acknowledge and accept that i owe thousand pounds to my supplier it's a recognition okay all right uh, now let's do one thing uh, transaction on date 20th of august 24th of august and 29th of august we give you 10 minutes and you do by yourself the best way is have a piece of paper and a pen to scribble with and draw it if you if you keep thinking in your head without writing believe me it'll be very confusing expressions are very important express uh 20 24 29 the one in the board these numbers are dates so august 20th august 24th august 29th okay um let's all discuss what happens on august 20th and please raise your hands raise your hands if you know it or if you're interested to answer it and give the give the narrative give the story so uh what happens on august 20th uh well you receive cash mhm mm the third receipt yeah mhm mm <laughs> what what it means <laughs> what it means then <laughs> what it means the money comes in yes uh so when cash comes in uh, would you call it so would you call it cash debit because money comes in uh, then what is credit if cash come in is debit 2000 Huh? then what is that what is credit then huh? so it means that i will not write service it's not a new business it's not a new transaction uh, i mean it's not a new service you gave it is in according adjustment to something you have done in the past and remember on august 7th you gave a service for ten thousand. You build the customer for 10,000, but not before August 20th, he paid. And also he paid not full amount, but the partial amount. So when on August 7th, you debited the client, because debit the receiver. But on August 20, he pays you. It means his debt is decreased. So he's a giver in this case. So when I write him credit, he's a giver. But the thing is, the catch is that he doesn't pay you full amount. It gives you 2,000. So basically, if you look at uh, debit 10,000 and credit 2,000, the net debit is still 8,000, which basically means that he still owes you 8,000. No, 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 because then it will, we will keep writing it. Maybe again, after one week, he pays you 5,000 again, his debt decrease. The same thing happened again, but this time, so still he owes you. So we it keep doing like that. Yeah. So on August, august 20th so when you record the transaction it's nice to it's good to know it's good to have a recheck the previous transactions also all right yes 
No, it's not a loan. Loan is something when you, when it's not a business thing, but it's like you, you have a furniture company, and you give loan to a friend or a or a next door shop. That's not your business transaction. Then you will call it loan. These are the normal, usual service transactions. The business as usual. Loans are not businesses as usual, unless you are a lending company. Unless you're a bank. Yes. So you put the you have to uh, mm -hmm. you have to write uh, sell cash to sell the loan. Here? How, how do you you mean this one? Yes, that one. Look, uh, this is a uh, follow up transaction. Uh, what happened on August 7th? On August 7th. Oh, it's a follow up now. You sold something on August 7th. So you can't call it sales again because you sold it already on August 7th. See, on August 7th, you sell something, uh, but you don't get the full cash. You, well, you didn't get any money. But then on August 20th, you receive the cash. But how do you tell that this is a continuous transaction? Because uh, it says recover 2000 cash in photography fee earned previously. Yeah, so you need to imagine that the, the service is given already. Mm -hmm. uh, any ideas what happens on August 24? What happens on August 24? Uh, would you like to explain what happened on August 24? So clients pay 1500 uh, It means uh, cash debit. So yeah. Client pays me. So cash debit. Very good. For services. And uh, it means that services or sales is credit. Uh, Later. Yeah, but what would you write in credit then? Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. If I give now, I put sales, right? It will be later. Well, the thing is that. Um, The client immediately pays you fifteen thousand. The service is yet to be performed. So in a situation like it happened, just again, visualization is there. You want to hire Mr. P's services or photography. You go to his office and you say, uh, Mr. P, we want to give, give you a business. Uh, in one month's time, I have a party. Uh, what do you think would be expenses? And Mr. P says, you know what? I would charge uh, 15,000 pounds from you for the whole function. But I have a condition that I receive money in advance. Maybe he has a bad experience with me in the past and didn't pay. Uh, whatever is the reason, uh, Mr. P insists that give me in advance. Like in many cases, I know, uh, you also know that we pay in advance. Rent is always paid in, in advance. Uh, if you take the class services, they always have one month deposit. So when you take the service first time, you actually pay two months rent. One, the security and one, the advance, I guess. Uh, so this is like a, uh, the revenue is pre-received. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Uh, but the hard fact is that cash comes in. Cash comes today or tomorrow, it doesn't change color. So comes in, comes in. So on August 24, 
कैश अकाउंट और कैश डेबिट फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड या क्वेश्चन इज वॉट इज क्रेडिट नाउ आई लाइक द डिस्कशन दैट शुड वी से द सर्विस इन एडवांस क्रेडिट और शुड वी से द क्लाइंट क्रेडिट Mm-hmm. Okay. Please, please let's let's fight. Let's let's debate. <laughs> I mean, don't don't throw don't throw don't throw chairs on each other. But let's have the discussion. Yeah. Wait a sec. Wait a sec. Uh, let's be consistent. Uh, this. this transaction is exactly opposite to what happened on august 7th do you know on august 7 you gave a service but the client hasn't paid now on here on august 24 you got the money already the service is not given yet can you correlate so on august 7 you you gave the service but the client says oh yeah i would pay later and even see this guy uh didn't pay full amount even on 20 he only gave 2000 but here um on august 24 we already received money from a different client for a service which we have not given yet look at the word uh the client immediately pays you 15000 for a service to be performed at a later date so what do you think the client is a credit yes i still think it's service well actually um what do you say sir about it uh, for me like outstanding sales mhm to be performed but uh, like we made a temporary account mm mm-hmm. it could be client but mm-hmm. it's not a sale so we will uh, write here kind of uh, outstanding uh, sales or mm-hmm. prepaid something but not the client name because uh, uh, usually in uh, sales we don't uh, write the uh, client name but then don't you think that when we made this credit sale on uh, August seventh, uh, we should have written the name of the service outstanding. outstanding instead of writing the word client. Yeah, it could be uh, interchangeably used. Yeah. But uh, here we can write the client. At the end of the day, it doesn't really affect much. It will yeah. not affect. It will not affect much here. Yeah. yeah, because at the uh, ultimately it mm. will. Cancel out. If yeah. we write the outstanding sale, it will be cancelled when we perform the sale. Mm. If yeah. we write the client's name, it still cancels out. Yeah. That's right. So it doesn't matter. You both are right. Yes. So for example, if you say cash debit fifteen thousand, and uh, you say uh, the you service, huh? You encourage fighting for an answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm see what uh, when there's a fight going. <laughs> when there's a fight going on and a, and a, a moderator comes uh, we call it the word as a mediator or a we call the word truce cease fire uh, then normally say oh, yes you, i know i know you are a victim you're right you're right yes you are also a victim <laughs> you're also right <laughs> so you both are right <laughs> so i i i just like a like you and no i i try to be as polite and as diplomatic as possible you both are right so you can write uh, Uh, Paulina can say that yes, it's a cash account debit, and client credit because he's a giver. He gives you money, but you can say that it's a pre pre sales or pre pre received sales. You can call it not not a big deal. Believe me, at the when the cash is settled, it will cancel out. It won't affect. Okay, so 
I hope you won't mind if I write customer credit. No. Yeah, or a client credit. Yeah. Even though if you write uh, uh, pre-received sales, it's perfectly fine. Absolutely seamless. But I don't want to write two things here. So cash account debit, 15,000, and client uh, credit. But then you can, there's always notes we write down in the bracket that basically this owes to this person. Yeah. Like oh, that, that same can happen here because you can have many clients, yeah. right? So the same thing, can happen. we always write some notes, but I, I'm deliberately ignoring that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if we say this word, uh, the, the, instead of client, I say, I say uh, um, Mr. Um, William Jefferson um, immediately pay 15,000 pounds for the service to be performed later. Then we would write, not client, then we will say Mr. Jefferson. Then we know Mr. Jefferson is Mr. Jefferson, unless you have two Mr. Jeffersons in your dealing with you. <laughs> then we can write junior and senior. Huh? You got the idea? Yeah. All right, good, good. Now, the last one is the business. Ah, oh, yes, Paulina. You say again? The last one. Well, I'm, I'm not answering it. I'm just saying so that I can still, you want to answer it, okay. Uh, Paulina is very dominating today, yeah? Paulina, yeah? I, I, you know what, I like this very go-getter kind of people. Hey, I will answer it. How dare you ask questions to anybody else? Don't you see me? You need to answer, uh, ask me first. Okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> with all my proud privilege and all the rights which are vested in me by the virtue of a teacher, I hereby invite Paulina to answer this question. Yes, there you go, Paulina. <laughs> Good. Mm -hmm. Good job. So what what would you call debit? Uh, a, a, a minor, minor, uh, by risking my, you know, uh, if I can make a small correction, you know, Paulina, I can be a little bit uh, sarcastic in a nice way, yeah? Because I, I, I want people to be happy and I want to. All right. Uh, I will not write you the word purchase. You know why? The purchase is on normally the material, the raw material type of stuff. Here you buy the equipment. So it's like a plant. So it's, uh, it's like an asset. You with me? So I would call it a equipment or machinery instead of purchase. But imagine I'm a dealer of this machine. Then, then I would be using the word purchase and sales because that's my core business. My core business is not to buy and sell machinery or equipment. My core business is to provide photography services, yeah? So the purchase and sales are only uh, confined to my services. This is not a service. You buy the asset. So instead of purchase debit, you say equipment debit. Mm -hmm. It goes out. Yes. 
our supplier. Uh huh. Uh, very good. Very good. Yes. Yes. Bravo. Fantastic. So in this case, what happens? You buy the equipment. So equipment comes in for sure. For the full value, 100,000 pounds. Equipment debit comes in. But you don't pay the full amount then and there. You only pay 25,000 pounds. It means 25,000 leaves the shores of the company. Goes out, credit. Question is, what is the gap filler here? It can't be cash because you didn't pay it. Then you write down the name of the giver. And the giver is, as Paulina said, there's no name of the supplier, so let's call him supplier. Or company X or whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, to be honest, I will not bother much because it doesn't really affect much. As long as the logic is there. Okay. Uh, so in this case, you can say equipment, uh, Sahar wrote already, uh, equipment debit comes in. What comes in is debit, real account. What goes out is a credit, real account. Supplier is the one who you owe, means he's a giver, is a personal account. So three accounts, uh, two types of accounts involved here, the real account and the personal account. Now imagine uh, after a few days, what happens? You pay him, all right? Then what will happen? Supplier, receiver, debit, cash goes out, so, it's a, so supplier, credit, supplier, debit cancels, cash becomes full value, all right? So at the end of the day, uh, it doesn't really matter. These debit, credit, sorry, these credit transactions are only to facilitate your business because let's accept, we don't deal with all cash basis. So for example, after one week, this, uh, you pay to the supplier, then you say supplier, debit, cash, credit. You owed him, you paid him, cancels. Credit, debit, cancels. Cash, another 75,000. On top of the previous 25,000. 25, 75, 100. 100, value paid. So these are only ducts. The credit transactions are only a kind of what is the word when you want to make some balancing act from, uh, yeah, from one pipe to another pipe is a duct. So just let the flow go on. So it's only a, these credit transactions are only facilitators because when you pay them, they're as good as cash transaction. Hmm? All right. Okay. Uh, Let's do one more exercise. I think you need some more practice, but you're doing a good job. Uh, now, uh, forget about Mr. P, uh, forget about the photography business. It's a new transaction, new. The whole story is new. Remember the narrative, the story behind the transaction and visualization uh, can be really uh, important thing. It can help you. You can argue that nowadays we use machines, softwares, even artificial intelligence. Uh, why do we do it? Because we don't do them. Things go um, automatically, but machines make mistake. You should know more than the machine. So if you know, you can find the mistakes, errors committed by the, the machine also. So it's very important you know at least as much as the machine does.
Uh, am I still recording it? Mm, pause. So, uh, let's start discussion on on March 2017. Uh, Alonzo starts a wholesale business. All right, no problem. He started business with capital of fifteen thousand pounds and land worth ten thousand. Uh, it implicitly means that cash fifteen thousand and land ten thousand. So basically, this gentleman uh, has brought two things. Is it what you mean, Sahir? That he brings some money and land to the yes. building? Yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, uh, I would play safe, and I would call that. Uh, Alonzo has brought cash, 15,000, and land worth 10,000 um, to, the, to the business. So business gets cash and land. Debit what comes in. And credit the giver. Giver in this case is Alonzo. But Alonzo is represented by a very nice word called capital because his name would, will not appear in the books. Okay, So transaction on March 1 would be uh, cash debit 15,000, land debit 10,000, capital credit 25,000. Mm -hmm. I hope we all agree with this. Uh, the second is, on 8th of March, bought goods from Boone and friends, thousand pounds, and by cash, from XYZ, uh, 2,000 pounds. I think, it, let's call it pounds. Yeah. Uh, here, there are two things involved. You made two purchases. Uh, in the first case, it's from Boone and friends, but it doesn't say cash. But in the second part, it specifically says cash. So we have a reason to believe that the first part of transaction is a credit purchase. And the second part is a cash purchase. Okay. So if you combine them, uh, purchase account debit, uh, 3,000? Yes. So purchase debit, 3,000. But, so purchase debit means uh, what comes in, right. debit. So purchase debit, yeah? Uh, but what goes out is cash, 2,000, right? So cash, credit, 2,000, but we are not paying cash to Boone and friends. In this case, we treat them as they have given you a favor. It's like a, so they are the givers. So you owe them money. So they have given you something. So in this case, uh, Boone and brother, friends are credit for 1000. So all together, sorry? No, purchase comes in, debit. The things come in. You see, you bought some raw material, equipment, some processed, whatever you brought, something is coming in your business. What comes in is debit. All right, just the name of the Yeah, so purchase is a debit, uh, but what do you pay? You don't pay full cash. You pay cash to X, Y, Z. Because you pay them cash, then there's no point of writing their name because you paid them then and there. So what goes out is cash. So in this case, X, Y, Z is only a extra information to puzzle you. But in the first part of transaction, it doesn't say word cash. So we assume that the purchase you made from Boone and friends is, is on credit. Okay. So then Boone and friends would show up as your lenders or the givers. Okay, so we can combine them. Uh, on March 13th, you sold goods to Cassidy for 1,500 and buy cash 
5,000. You sold two, uh, you made two sales transactions. Uh, the first one, the second one, the cash comes in. 5,000 comes in. Okay. Uh, cash comes in is 5,000. Sales is together 6,500. Is it? 6,500. Sales is something going out. So sales credit 6500. Uh, Cassidy is debit because she is a receiver. Look, cash comes in 5000, but all together sales are 6500. On that day, uh, regardless of money received or not, 6500 worth goods leave your company. It's very important to understand it. That on this day, the goods worth 6500 leave your company. What goes out is credit. 6500 credit. It's called sales. Yeah, sales goes out. Cash comes in 1500. Cassidy didn't pay you. Oh, no. Cassidy didn't pay you. It means Cassidy is the receiver. Debit the receiver. So Cassidy, debit. 1500 cash debit 5000 uh, and sales worth 6500 goes out credit uh gave away a charity of cash 50 and merchandise 30 so you are a good company. You are a very uh, uh, you you believe in uh, corporate social responsibility. Uh, you like that the company should also do some charity. Well, it's a nice thing. Uh, but to this charity, you pay 30, 50 cash and 30 some merchandise. Okay. Something was in your warehouse. You said, okay, fine. These are some cardigans. Nobody's buying them. All right, let's give them to, to charity. Uh, so cash leaves you. Merchandise leave you. And what leave the business is credit. So 50 cash credit, merchandise 30 credit. Put them together, call it charity expense or charity debit because or basically it's an expense. Okay, so charity debit 80. All right, so charity, you pay the receiver or expense. It doesn't matter. You can call charity as a receiver, okay? If the debit, if the receiver, then debit is a receiver. Or if, if you call charity as expense, expense is still debit. So in, in which, whichever way you think, uh, charity would be debit. Uh, then paid boom and friends cash, 975. Discount received. 25. Now, this is interesting and tricky. You bought something. It's very important to see the past also. You bought something from Boone and friends for 1000. And now you say, you call Boone and friends and say, uh, Mr. Manager, we want to pay you. Uh, can we settle it for 975? In many cases, there is a bargaining. Uh, we are your regular buyers. Could you pay us some, give some discount? Or you are very fussy that we should give you 1,000. Uh, he says, all right, fine. Uh, pay me 975 in the full and the final settlement. Fine, done. So what happens is that you owe 1,000 to Boone and friends. Then they were givers. Now you give them 1,000. But actually, you don't pay them 1000 You give them 975 So what goes out is not 1000 What goes out is 975 But you know what? You have cancelled. You, you say to the Boone and friends, all right, fine. Your account is settled. Uh, we owed you 1000 And now we gave you full settlement 1000 But actually, you haven't paid 1000 you gave them 975. 
difference is the discount you received. It's like an income or a gain. All the incomes and gains credit. <laughs> so automatically things will fit into. You don't, in this case, I didn't try to see debit what comes in, credit the income and stuff. No, automatically it fits in. I owe you a thousand, but I pay you 975 pence. The difference is 25. Where, where, where will it fit? Debit or credit? Well, debit is 1,000. Credit is 975. So the balancing figure should be in the credit. Now, what does it mean? It means I received a discount. I should be happy. It's like an income or a gain. Income or a gain, credit. So the things start working spontaneously. Okay. Remember the nominal account? All the incomes and gains are credit, and all the payments, expenses, losses are debits. Next day, you receive from Cassidy 1,500. Uh, no, you receive from her uh, 1,450. And you give her discount. Cassidy owed you. 1,500. Today, she wants to clear her account. All right, so Cassidy was a debit because she was the receiver in the beginning. Now she's a giver because she is settling the records. She's paying you. But she doesn't give you cash 1,500. She gives you 1,450. Well, she owes you 1500. She gives you 1450. Money comes in, debit 1450. She's a giver, 1500. But where's the gap? The gap is on the debit side. And what is that? Discount given, discount debit. It's like an expense to you, like a loss to you and all expenses, losses debited. Okay, so cash comes in, 1450, discount given, 50, and Cassidy, 1500. She doesn't owe you any more, anything. Accounts settled. Okay, is there any transaction which you think you have some doubts we can discuss about it but if you understand these transactions you can you can understand anything because the the idea the logic the base argument would be same that will not change. So in other words, I can say that I can try to make artificially some transactions complicated, but the, as long as you know three things, these three accounts, personal account, debit the receiver, credit the giver, real account, debit what comes in, credit what goes out, nominal, debit all expenses, losses, credit all incomes, gains. You will not go wrong. You will be on track. Just these six things you need to remember. It will never let you go uh, wrong, basically. Hmm? And, uh, Rebecca raised a very interesting point, uh, and I discussed with Seher. We have done now three exercises, yeah? Yes. So one, two, three, is it? Sorry, did I made you popular? Uh, what's your name? Sorry. Deborah. Oh, I'm sorry, Deborah. I'm sorry, Deborah. Then how? Who's Rebecca? All right. Well, not here. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. But I, it sounds good, yeah? Deborah, Rebecca. Sorry, sorry, Deborah. I, 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 I'm very sorry. Okay, I'm very forgetful, yeah. Um, 
All right, so Deborah has given a very good suggestion that could, can we post the, the exercises, solutions we have done already? And Seher has agreed that she would find the solutions for uh, exercise one, two, and three, and she would be uploading it soon on in Optima, yeah? Okay, so, well, if you want, we can take a break now. Uh, but, but you know what, this is a little bit in contrary, contrary to what we agreed. Uh, please come back at sharp four o'clock here, five to four. Okay. And then for the rest of rest half an hour, uh, Seher would discuss with you uh, some more um, exercise. Uh, remember, remember that 